Welcome back to another episode of Mason Munchies. I'm your host, Reagan, and today we're gonna to be focusing on making a budget-friendly meal. I know I've been stressing budget all this semester, but we're college students, so obviously that's very important. But today's episode is very much even more special when it comes to budgets because today I spent under $10 at the grocery store. I got all this stuff, and we're gonna feed ourselves for about a week with this meal. So you're looking at this, you're like, is she making spaghetti? What is she making? I'm gonna be making my own take on baked ziti. Um, I'm not a fan of like the normal baked ziti uh, pasta, so I get this kind, the rotoni. Um, but before I get into all the ingredients, let me break down um, our handy dandy receipt that we always talk about. Um, so this receipt's a little bit long because I decided to get other things. If you follow our Instagram account, you would have saw that I was testing things out a couple of days ago. But we only spent $10 on this. Um, last week, or last episode, we made a taco soup crock pot. Um, hope you tried that recipe out. My aunt said she did, so shout out to her. Um, but I told you last time that I had bought like three pounds of ground turkey and I was freezing the rest of it. Um, so this is where that other portion, so I still had, I had two bags, now I'm using a second bag of it. So this is where that comes in hand, so that saved me a bulk of my money for today. And that's why we got to keep it under $10. Uh, so I defrosted that the other night, and now I'm going to be using that in today's episode. We only spent $1.99 on this baguette. Um, cheese was on sale, two for four, so I obviously got more cheese because you can never have too much cheese. I had this sauce, this can of sauce in my room already. I like Italian sausage and garlic because I put a lot of Italian seasoning and had this as well. And then the only things I really bought were the pasta, the baguette, and the cheese. So first we're gonna start out by cooking our box of pasta. You wanna preheat the oven to 350 degrees um, before you start cooking, that way it's already done, you're not waiting for it. So first we're gonna put this into the boiling water that we already have. I'm not making the whole box today just because um, a whole box will make you a whole bunch. And I have like a little square pan and I'm only meal prepping for the week. So we're just gonna put, we just have this much left in the box. And we're gonna put that in there and let that cook for about five minutes. So this is all gonna be like a one pot situation type deal. We're gonna put this pot back on the stove Put it on a burner that we didn't use because we don't want to burn the pan. I'm gonna run some cold water. And then we're just gonna touch on these. So see how I can like touch it, but it's not mush, but it's also not also not like it's firm, but it's not like mushy. That's how you want your pasta to be. When it's mushy, people just don't want to eat it. We're gonna put this back into the pan. We're gonna take our sauce and our Italian seasoning. This is the ground turkey that we made, or yeah, that we made beforehand. Um, I just cooked it with olive oil in a pan, and then I put the Italian seasoning in there as well to give it flavor, like give it its own flavor. So we're just gonna put that in the pot as well. Mix the meat in with the noodles first before I put the sauce in. Then we're gonna take our can of sauce. I don't like a lot of sauce. Like when I get pizza, I get light sauce if I can. So I start out with just doing half a can at first, just to see how much we're getting on the noodles. So it looks a little dry right now. So mix it up, make sure we're getting the sauce all around. So I still think that's not enough sauce because you're gonna also be baking this as well. So I'm just gonna go for it. Put the rest of the can in there. And stir that in as well. So I'm just gonna go through again and put Italian seasoning inside so I make sure that the sauce is seasoned. Um, just to add that extra flavor in there. So this is why we have two bags of cheese. I like to mix some of my cheese in to my pasta. You'll see in a second why. So I like to mix it in with it, just so I make sure every bite has some cheese in it. So we have all this cheese here. 
mixed in with our pasta. So now we're just gonna go put it in our pan. So as you can see, this pot is pretty full and that's why I didn't wanna cook the whole box because we have this tiny pan. Um, sometimes what happens is when I'm at home, if I use a pan like this, I might use another pan and make another small one, like give it to someone like a neighbor or like give it to my mom. So you're gonna make a lot. So we're just, first we're gonna fill this bottom layer right here. It's about half the pan right now. Okay, so we have that. Cheese. I told you I really like cheese. So we're gonna fill this whole layer with cheese. I just got mozzarella cheese. Um, I got mozzarella because I like to put grated parm on afterwards. So um, you can choose any cheese you want. Sometimes I just use whatever's in my refrigerator. So if I have like the Mexican blend from when I made tacos the other night, I throw that in there. I have cheddar cheese, I have sliced provolone cheese, whatever. I've already used one bag and I haven't even got into my second layer. So then with the rest of this, we're gonna put more, hopefully this fits. We're gonna spread this out once again. We're a little bit over the pan, but that's fine. We're just gonna press it down. We're gonna make another layer of cheese on top. So you wanna just make sure you're reaching all the corners, making sure you get all that gooey goodness. So we have cheese everywhere. So we need to prep this for going into the oven. Um, a nice little trick I learned when I was cooking Thanksgiving one year and like I was confused as to why we put aluminum foil over the turkey. Um, so it helps it cook faster, but without drying it out, it like keeps in all the, um, I don't want to say moisture, but it keeps in all like the flavors and juices. So you just want to use some aluminum foil. And we're going to cover this up. So we're gonna cover this up and we're gonna put this in the oven for about 10 minutes with this on and about five minutes without it on. So the 10 minutes in the oven with this on is gonna make it really gooey and cheesy, just how we're gonna like it. And then afterwards we're gonna put it in again just to make sure that everything's like cooked through warm, not cold, anything like that. So we're gonna put this in the oven right now. So we have the oven preheated at 350. Um, an important thing people should know is that, uh, if you notice, I put the pan right in the middle of the oven. Um, that's just gonna make it easier for you to get it cooked around all sides. Um, this oven's pretty good. It has the rack like halfway there, so it's gonna get it this way and that way. And then you don't wanna open it like I did, but I was just trying to show you, um, just leave it closed. And that's why a lot of people's cookies end up looking really weird, because they don't put them leveled with how the oven is working. So you just wanna make sure that the thing is already like that. So we're just gonna wait for that to cook. So there's multiple ways you can go about this. Um, you can just eat it like it is, just rip it off, eat it that way, or you can pop this sucker in the oven and at the same time you're making this, so you can throw that on the side and you can put it in for like five minutes just to give it a warm, uh, make it look warm. And then you can honestly serve it with butter. Um, one of my favorite things is olive oil and a dipping seasoning. So it's similar to the Italian seasoning that we have. It just has the same type of spices and you can just put that in the olive oil and you can dip it that way, warming this up. Or you can make your own garlic bread. You just wanna take that out. Always make sure you turn your oven off. So then after you are done melting the cheese a little bit, you're gonna put it back in for about five to 10 more minutes. And then that's when you're going to, it's gonna like brown on the outside just a little bit. And then the cheese is gonna get more gooey and yummy and delicious. So a, a pan this size is generally gonna make you about five or six meals. So honestly, just get you like a little container, like the Rubbermaid containers that you can get at Giant or anywhere else. Um, and you just wanna like cut them into squares, boom, 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 and then put them in there. And then you can just pack other stuff with it. Um, so if you wanna like use it for lunch, which I probably will this week, or you can use it for meal prepping for dinner. Um, 
anything because if you're a busy college student like myself, this week has been really hectic for me and so this meal could not have come at a better time because I'm going to be meal prepping for the rest of the week so I don't have to cook and yeah that took us maybe like 20 minutes not even to make all of this and now I have five or six meals for the week.